Thank you, Honourable Speaker. It is a great privilege to rise in this House today to address the throne speech that was delivered earlier this week as we start a new session that anticipates a new budget for the upcoming year. And it is an exciting time for me after having spent a previous uh, term of office with a minority government and to be in a place with a a whole bunch of fresh new faces with new ideas and new energies um, and new skills and uh, a lot to live up to. I, I, I've been so impressed with the folks that have, have come on board and are so eager to help British Columbia become a better place for all of us. I want to acknowledge that uh, we stand, I stand here, we gather here on the lands of the Lekongan speaking peoples for the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations and uh, I want to recognize that at home it's the Comox First Nations and the, the territories of, of, a, of, peop of a proud people who I am very proud that we are working hard to serve in a better way and create a a place where we have shared decision making and shared prosperity and that everybody gets to participate in, a, in, a, in the recovery that's, that's going to be coming our way. Uh, it's coming our way, but it's going to become more fulsome as we all uh, get through this pandemic uh, together and, and come out stronger. I want, the, the throne speech began as, uh, usual with the memorials to lost souls uh, of people of, of note in, in British Columbia and beyond, of course, with uh, the, the passing of Prince Philip. It's, it's an uh, amazing uh, life that, that someone can lead for 99 years and every day being able to be contributing to, to a to the globe, to, for, you know, not just to to themselves, to their families, but to to their country and to the to the whole globe. And I'm also reminded that everybody who is lost leaves behind loved ones. And amongst those great names that were mentioned, I wanted to uh, particularly raise up my hands up for for the life of Kim Manton. I had not met. Uh, a more bubbly personality, somebody who had the strength of her convictions and an ability to just take life by the horns and, and lead you along to better places. And I, I, I truly do miss her. And uh, don't, it'll be a long time before we see someone with that kind of energy again. I'd also like to acknowledge some of folks that have just recently passed in my community who also served in different ways. Uh, Ardeth Chambers passed away in January. She was a community activist that I saw as always part of a whole. She was with the, the Glacier Grannies with the Stephen Lewis Foundation and you would always see her uh, serving meals at fundraisers or, or doing that sort of thing. And she raised a fabulous daughter who was at her side when she passed um, earlier in this year. I'd also like to recognize Heather Kennedy McNeil, who uh, worked with my husband in mental health and addictions uh, until they both retired, and she was an activist in the community who, who worked very hard on LGBTQ issues, um, environment, uh, social issues. She was just constantly involved in her community, and she will be missed, both by her husband Murray, but also by the greater community. Bent Harder, I met as a cycling enthusiast. He was 94 who passed away um, this earlier this year. And those kinds of personalities that can persevere even into their 90s to make a difference is just an inspiring uh, uh, privilege to have, have met them and to, to have made their acquaintance. And a uh, woman who was a strong, um, NDP organizer who um, was involved in my life in my very early days of party politics, Liz Woods, passed away also. And she was surrounded by people who supported her because she 
had inspired them through the years. And finally, the most recently, Wayne Bradley, who's an activist who, can, who, who could always, um, well, I, I, I made reference to him as raising Cain. He, he was one to always be that uh, creation of a little bit of, what's it called, cognitive dissonance, where you, you, just, you just need to keep questioning, keep questioning to move forward. And all of those people will be missed. And along with, in the rest of British Columbia, all the folks who have lost their lives to COVID-19, over 1,500, and the over 1,800 uh, people who have died from overdose, the overdose epidemic, and then the multitudes of people who've died from cancer to all manner of disease and debility. And my heart goes out to every single person who has had to endure it, that loss, through this pandemic. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, they say, and I, and, and I hope that people carry the love um, that they had for the folks that they've lost and, and, and feel stronger for it. Um, I wanted to mention, earlier this year I got to listen to Chris Hadfield as a keynote speaker for the Alzheimer's Society. And he spent a half a year up in space and had to uh, live his relations with his, his people virtually. And nobody else had done that right, before the pandemic. Um, but he, he did it and he was speaking about how it changed him. And on his return, they, they pulled him out of the capsule and it looked like he was being born again. And he said, he came out of there and at that moment, he knew that it, it wasn't just him that had changed, but his world had changed. And all of us in the world had changed. And he, so, he likened that to, to where we are, to recognize that, that we are changed by this pandemic. And it isn't all in a bad way. It can be an exciting time to see how resilient people can be. And resilience is, this, is the key for us getting through this. And I will just finish with what Chris Hadfield had to say, that we are in a new world, it is a changed world. And one thing that we should all learn is that we need to have patience and to make space for imperfection.